Notes are just a symbol of pitched and learning them is just the tip of the iceberg of what makes for an unforgettable performance. If you learn a piece by doing them note by note, it's going to take you much longer time and you probably won't enjoy the process. I'd like to show you in this episode what it means to translate a score and breathe life into it. Welcome back to Joy of Practicing. I'm your host, Ferdi Talan. When a living being does not have a pulse, it is proclaimed dead. Same thing with music. If it does not have a pulse, it does not sound alive. And by pulse, I don't mean accents on every heavy beats. Pulsation is mainly the differentiation of sound. Playing every note the same is like drawing a straight line. You cannot discern a shape from it. This is not what I meant with having a pulse. to accent the downbeat like that. Let me illustrate with the left end. I'm going to play this with straight even with no differentiation. Now that's not necessarily true and really not what's written. What's written are, these are two different instruments if your hands were an orchestra. So once your ear become familiar with that, you could try to produce it with one hand. And really what needs to happen is, Basically what I'm doing is I'm going in and up for the first bass note and then I come in with the syncopated note a tad sooner and also more up so that I could come down and connect myself back into the bass line. So if I slow, exaggerate it and slow it down. So then you have two voices. Melody and bass line are not difficult to identify. But what about what's going on in between them? In most cases, the motors of a piece are found in the harmonic progression and inner voices. How the melody can soar depends on its support and connection from the inner voices. If you take a look at this particular variation and identify the parts, there are four parts to it. You have the bass. Then you have the syncopated notes on top of the bass. And then you have this little figuration. On top of it, you have the melody. Because if you only play the melody and the bass, it sounds very sparse. So this little figuration in the middle is actually what's moving the, the piece. With their support, your melody can play on top of it. I cannot stress enough how important timing is in piano playing. Let me demonstrate a couple of things that can illustrate this for you. Timing is one of the primary ingredients to make differentiation. So if I do this even...
it's not as interesting. I'm actually playing this a little faster. So I have more time to articulate the melody. I'm exaggerating, but you get the idea. So eventually you'll get... Remember that the piano is a percussive instrument. The more that you can engineer a sound to deviate from this fact, the better that you can make the instrument sing. There are so many ways of how you can vary the sound from one note to the other. There's direction, surface of the finger, how you enter the key, and where on the keyboard. And any combination of this will produce different results. Piano playing is a complex activity with intricately subtle muscle movements. Your task is to translate the composer's notation into a realm of sound that makes sense for you so that you can convince and draw your listeners with your message. Every composer has a different language for expressing what he or she wants. You should never take the notation at face value because it is only an indication of what the composer hears. The work is in translating what they meant and uncovering the places where you can deliver the emotional impact. So you look for places of expression and, for the lack of the better word, milk them. For example, just there, this, it's a beautiful transition, but how can I highlight it? So what I just did was I played the first two beat a little faster so I could take more time and highlight the A flat. Whenever you take time from something, you have to always give it back. So in the end, it ends up equal. The other one that I um, that I found in just this past four measures is uh, the F sharp. Look at this dissonance here. You have an F natural, and then all of a sudden you have an F sharp. That's out of place, right? So you wanted to point it out. Thank you very much for watching. If you have not subscribed, please do so and don't forget to turn on notifications so you'll know whenever a new episode is released. Until next time, I'm your host, Ferdi Talan.